Hey guys, we're going to be doing a video on tile maps. If you've never done tile maps before, this video will help you get familiar with the process uh, from importing individual sprite sheets that are intended for tile maps, how to prepare them for a tile map, how to create a palette, how to adjust your palette, and then apply the individual tiles to a tile map, and then talk about some considerations for things like colliders if you want to add some colliders to your tile maps. So if you want to follow along I am using two sets of sprite sheets and you can download them here on this link you can see them in the description below as well and as well as a link to some of these details that I'm using as my guide. So two of the sprite sheets I'm using is this terrain assets PNG and this jungle assets PNG. Um, from just quick inspection they should seem like regular sprite sheets um, but this one is designed that was to be a 16 by 16 uh, grid size and this is by 13 by 13 grid size. I'll talk more about that in a, in a moment. Normally when we import something like this into Unity we might throw these into our sprite editor and then just have it automatically look for ed detect edges and then define them based on the the greater shape of the graphic and in this case for tile mapping the whole point is that the the art designer has created smaller portions of these where we can pick and choose different consistent size cells to recombine into different and new uh, graphical layouts Oftentimes we use our tile maps to create a level or a structure in our game and it's these individual cells that we will later be able to piece apart and then recombine into different shapes like this hashtag sort of thing can be broken apart and then be made into a greater lattice type of shape or this thing could be more of like an, an octagon, not an octagon, sorry, in like a, an figure eight or something that is not apparent from here but with all of these different individual parts we can combine them to make it look like a different shape here and so um, we'll talk through all of these steps so please download these two files if you haven't already from this link below and let's uh, go into unity and we're going to create a new folder just to hold these things for this example so i'll create a new folder and i'm going to call it tile maps and I'll just make sure that this is in my assets folder and then into these tile maps I'm going to import those two files that I just talked about the terrain assets and the jungle assets if you first drop them in here unity may or may not automatically cut these guys up so I'll assume that they aren't and I'll just change them as we might expect unity to consider when you first import them usually when you drop a sprite into here it considers it to be a spread mode single so I just wanted to reset from there so from here the jungle assets it, we want to change it to a multiple because we wanted to cut it up in a certain way and I know that for this jungle sprite sheet I, it's a 16 by 16 setup so I'll change the pixels per unit to 16 and hit apply from there I'll go to my sprite editor and by default I think it tried to slice it up based on the shape like I sort of mentioned before and that it was just sort of doing its um, edge detection and we don't want to have it that way we want to go to sprite and change the grid size and set this to 16 by 16 and hit slice you'll notice that now that the lines are um, at a consistent distance vertically and horizontally and these individual units are now going to be what we consider to be sprites that we could pick and choose and that's basically what a palette is going to turn into I'll talk more about that in a second but in this interim let's hit apply and we'll close the sprite editor and jump into the terrain assets we're going to do the same thing here change it from single to multiple and in this case we're going to set this to be 32 hit apply go to sprite editor and change the slice mode to a grid by cell size in this case pixel size is going to be 32 by 32 we'll hit apply or hit slice and uh, you'll notice now that these are going to be 32 pixels 
wide and deep. I'll hit apply. And close this window. Great, so we should be able to see those slices here. And that's sort of what we were predicting. You can see them here. We can preview the, the, the different um, assets as they are sliced. So um, we're going to do something slightly different now. And what we're going to do is if you've never created a tile map before is we need, we should create a tile palette. And just like in traditional painting, um, palettes are areas where we have distinct little cells that we can take and throw into our tile map to create new combinations of layouts and structures. So we'll go to window and go to 2D and select tile palette. We should see a floating window that appears and I like to dock this window to one side of my screen so that, oh, uh, I like it greater, let's see. I don't like it, I like it to be like this, cool. And so that I can see my scene view and then my tile palette view. Um, I'll just do this one more time, close my tab and go to window, go to 2D and hit tile palette. And I'm just gonna drag it by the name of this tab over into my game window. Now that's sitting in here, cool. And what we're gonna do is gonna create a brand new palette. Um, and we're gonna select here and create new palette. I'm going to call this one, we're going to start with the jungle assets. So I'll say this is my jungle palette. And I will, I know that I'm using a grid system that's rectangular, not hexagonal or isometric. And the cell size is going to be, you can set it to automatic, but most likely it's going to be one to one. From here, it wants to save a file in our assets folder. And I will, I normally like to create a new folder and throw my palettes, the palette files into a palettes folder inside my tile map folder. You'll notice that the jungle palette name is here, but we don't have a palette structure here. It doesn't know where to draw those tiles from. So what we could do now is we can take this jungle assets file and there's multiple ways to do this. We've already created a sliced up version of these individual tiles and we can simply just drag them into our palette if we want to and you'll notice that a grid structure appears and we can pick and choose where we want to and that's really great but another way to do this is to take the entire jungle assets sprite sheet and then drag it into the palette area and you'll notice that now that the white line uh, is incorporating a greater number of cells than it did before because it's going to predict where all the tiles are and it will harvest those individual tiles. So I'm going to pull in that whole thing and it's looking to take the entire sprite sheet and let's say that I'm going to put it into, it's going to save a, a individual tile asset for each possible tile. And I'm going to put it into my palettes folder. So I'm going to select that palettes folder and hit choose. And what it's going to do is it's going to take that original file that we had that was um, here. And you can remember that it cut it up into each little piece. And it's doing the same thing now. But in this case, it's not going to be a sprite file. It's going to be a tile asset file. And you can see that it's thinking really hard and recognizes that there's going to be 338 individual tile assets. And it's going to work and depending on your machine, it's going to take a little bit. But in the end, you'll notice that when it's finished, our palette looks exactly like that file that we had before. But you can see that now the grid structure is set up to be cutting up individually those uh, portions of the sprite sheet. And so if we select, let's say the arrow tool, the selection tool, we can select and look at these individual tiles. In the end, this palette is where we're going to draw from to be able to um, select an individual, individual or a grouping of these tiles and put them into our tile map. You'll see what I mean in a moment. If for some reason the your sprite sheet looks kind of funny in that it doesn't look like what it was before, like it doesn't look like this, but a smaller version of each individual cell 
and um that doesn't fit nicely right next to each other you'll know what i mean if it looks screwed up um this is the correct way it should look like but if it doesn't look that way then you should go to the tile map of the palettes object that we created there should be an object that represents the palette object this jungle palette and for me it should be here jungle palette it's this object that we are that i want you to look at so select it and look in the inspector and what you should adjust in this case for this jungle assets is that the cell size should definitely be one one and zero if you haven't done that um, you this is what it might look like if maybe for some reason you accidentally put 16 by 16 um, the the tile objects are going to look way smaller and so when we start to use them it's going to look kind of funny so um, coming back here make sure that you have your selected jump palette size to be one one and one okay cool so we have the palette and these individual objects now the way that they're sliced we're going to be able to pick from them and we're going to use our paintbrush in a moment to place our these individual tiles into our tile map so let's go into our scene view look to the hierarchy and go to 2d object and hit uh, tile map and you'll notice that there now is a grid system that appears overlaid into our scene and from here, this is where we can take portions of our tile palette and paint them, paint them onto our tile map. So the actual object that we are applying these um, tile assets to is a part of a grid system. And nested inside the grid system is the tile map object. So we can have multiple tile maps that we can apply these tile assets to and you can layer them if you want to. We'll talk more about that in a moment. But for the grid system here, um, cell sizes, you can adjust these if you want to. And so right now it's one to one to zero. If we make these smaller, you'll notice that we'll be able to fit more tiles into the world space of our scene if we wanted to. And it, it really depends on the orientation of your game and how you set up your game. But for me, this is going to work nicely one-to-one -one in relation to my spaceship. So if I, I think that these objects that I'm going to be, be painting in here are going to be too big, I might reduce the cell size so that these objects don't seem so massive compared to my spaceship. So now that I have my tile map here, what I can do is I can come to my palette and say I want to start painting individual portions of my tile map to have maybe a, a space bush right and so I'll take my paintbrush tool and select an area that I want to paint and so if I select this then the next time I click into my tile map it's going to paint into that area and you'll notice that when I'm in here I thought I painted stuff and it's not appearing but when I come over here I can see that oh it is painting this is a matter of just like we've talked about before possibly in that there is a renderer that is taking turns rendering graphics onto the scene and depending on the sorting layer that the renderer is uh, being told the order of applying graphics it may seem that we don't see anything but it's actually because other objects are getting rendered on top of it and so uh, depending on how your game is set up you might have to change your sorting layer of the tile map renderer so that it is rendering on top of things or possibly behind things depending on how you have it so we would go to this tile map renderer when we selected the tile map and changing the sorting layer that we have it so maybe in this case i want my tiles to be uh, behind my player which is in the foreground or characters and i'll have all my tiles be associated with the middle ground and so you see that as soon as I change my middle ground or set my tile map to be the middle ground, those things that I painted on earlier are now apparent. They weren't that they weren't there. They were just getting rendered behind other objects or other objects were getting rendered on top of it. Now, let's go back to painting things. 
there's a couple other tools that we can use. We can use the paint with field filled box or we can erase other areas that we've already painted onto. And you should take the time to experiment and fool around with different objects. Um, here we can select using just the paintbrush tool. If we select a portion, then now that I have selected a, a greater area, I can just use that to paint onto. If we are going trying to paint different things, then I will select this thing and then sort of experiment with what it looks like to maybe continue this bush so it gets longer in this area and then find one that rounds off this portion and rounds off here and then comes back and continues on here. That doesn't really look right in this scenario. So maybe I'll select this one and now this looks a little bit more right. I want this to be maybe in this, the layout of maybe the state of Oklahoma. So this portion, this obviously this wall doesn't look right. I should find one that has an interior corner and this one looks more appropriate here. So bam, that, you know, the, the point of this palette is that it has all the possible combinations of uh, structure from the interior corners and exterior corners so that when we create a structure like this, um, it looks appropriate. And maybe I want to just continue on and make it think about how I can expand this idea of making a shape that's unnatural, but seems to graphically fit together. So where's that interior corner? Maybe this guy here. Okay, cool. So maybe I have like a, a buff or something that my ship can fly into, but it is a tight squeeze and that they have to fly into this area to get it. Okay, cool. So again, I suggest you experiment with um, these other tools to paint into your tile map. Let's say that this is going to be my tile. Let's say this is, let's talk about having more than one tile map and how we might apply this. So this could be tile map one and another tile map they want to add in, it into, we might go to plus, go to 2D again and go to tile map. And this could be tile map two. And so let's name this tile map two. What's interesting with our palette is we can decide where we want to paint into purposefully. And so I can decide where I want to paint onto. This is going to help me select to tile map two. And let's say that I want to draw this one in here. I will select this portion paintbrush and then paint into there. Again, my tile map two doesn't have the appropriate sorting layer. So I'll go back into here, go to middle ground. This is now in that right spot. I can also on the scene side, change my focus to be only just the tile map. So I can see the one that I'm dealing with. I'm looking at tile map two. If I select tile map one, then it'll only show me the areas that are tile map one. Uh, if I shift my focus, you'll notice that the tile palette knows that this is where I'm painting onto. Um, and then I can also make it go back to normal and go back to focused on none. Cool. So at this portion, you should be able to experiment on how to paint onto different areas. And the process is going to be exactly the same way if we use a different tile set. So let's say that we want to create two tile palettes now. So we're, we're happy with this jungle palette for the moment. We'll come back to it in a second. But we want to have maybe a level that has interior stuff. And we I mentioned this terrain assets. We can go to our tile palette and create a new palette here. Go to create new. And in this case, let's say that this is going to be terrain palette. It's going to also be rectangular. Hit create. And I'm going to throw it into my palettes folder as well. From here, I'm going to drag in my terrain assets. It's going to do its thing. I'm going to put it all into the palettes folder. Uh, there's less individual tile assets that are going to be harvested from this original sprite. And we can see that the layout is appropriate in that the, the grid size is correct. 
I have individual tiles, and then I have constructible different types of tiles. So from here, excuse me, I can take and select maybe this one and then paint into my grid and do the exact same thing. And even though the this original tile assets was a 32 by 32 structure, we appropriately set the pixels per unit to be 32 so that when we lay them into our 16 by 16 grid, they fit proportionally. So I can be painting from different palettes onto the same tile map. Let's see what happens. I just accidentally clicked into this one, but since I am painting on the tile map one, I don't actually see that one because this was overlaying on the tile map two. This gets into sort of the, the, the sticking point of sorting layers. Both my tile map one and tile map two are both in middle ground, but I should actually try to distinguish the order inside the layer so that one, that Unity doesn't have any confusion about who gets rendered on top. Because if I accidentally put two uh, tiles onto the same sorting layer, I try to draw this guy onto this tile map and this tile map should be uh, drawn on top of the other. So you should distinguish one tile map's order and layer with a different value. And depending on the order in the layer, the higher the value, the one is going to be layered on top. So this order in layer is set to 10 and tile map 2 is set to 0. If I change tile map 2 to be set to 100, it, its contents should over, should be rendered on top of the other one. Okay, cool. So we'll come back and I'll make sure that I'm selected to map two and I want to erase some of these guys. I'll go to eraser and take these guys off. That one is actually on tile map one. So I'll erase that one. Uh, cool. Let's just fill in these other ones so that it looks back to normal where it was before. I'll select this one, paint here, and select this one, paint here. And let's now get into the idea of colliders. We can use um, an additional component to our tile map to say that, oh, if we drawn into, area, into certain areas, we can say that my ship cannot fly into those things. And so we can go to my tile map, whichever one I select, let's say tile map one. Let me just erase or just hide tile map two for the moment and get rid of some of this, this extra stuff. And we want to only deal with this structure right here. And I want to use a collider object for my tile map. And I'll use the tile map collider 2D. And what's nice about this is by default, if we drawn anywhere, then the tile map is going to put colliders into this area. And so if I get into my play, then my ship shouldn't be able to fly through it. So you can see that it's flying into this area where I have tile maps drawn. And you can see that in this area, I can't fly into it, which is great. Awesome. And in some cases, this is really nice because it's a shortcut. I don't need to create or draw any areas that are my tile map uh, where I want to have and uh, where I have stuff and I don't need to take away stuff. But in other cases, this can be kind of tricky, especially maybe in our tile map too, where we have, let's say that we've drawn an interior to our um, game. So let's say that I have this tile map somewhere and I only want the areas where I have these light color areas of my wall to be where I am, where is a boundary. So let's just paint this thing here. And let's sort of extend this area a little bit. So I'm gonna take this thing and extend it out. I'm gonna move around my my view so that you can imagine I'm just sort of expanding this interior of my my castle somehow so let's just make it a little bit longer 
and erase this area. So let's say that I want my ship to be able to fly into this area, but only bump into this really light color yellow area, but not this dark area. If I throw in, throw onto my, my tile map, this area that you can see that there's already outlined here, and this can be a drag because maybe I want my character to be able to go into this light area. How would we adjust this, right? And this is all about colliders now. So um, from this portion, the quickest way to make these adjustments is to go and find the individual cells. So let's say that I want to select this area. And I know universally that I always, whenever I lay this tile down, the only area that I want the, the collider to deal with is this yellow portion. What I would do is go to my tile assets and go to the sprite editor and find that one tile. And this is, can be kind of tedious, but it's going to be worth it in the end. Where Because if it's universal that I only want the collider to be here, then I would go to my sprite editor and so how do I do this again? I'm just going to pull this up one more time. Select the original sprite sheet that I had and then go to the sprite editor from the inspector. Bring up the the sliced area that we had and go to this top portion where it's a drop down window and select custom physics shape. From here, I'll select the cell that I want to adjust. And in this case, it's going to be let's just start with this area here. I'll select this and I will hit generate. It's going to create a set of gizmos that are um, areas that I can select and move around. And I can double click to create new nodes. And I will create this, these node areas that represent where I want a collider to be represented. And so for each individual cell, I'm going to do the same thing. I'll hit generate again and then drag in these nodes so that they encompass the area where I want the collider to exist. I'm just gonna do it for a few of these. I'm double clicking as my mouse is over a portion, it's gonna create a new node and that's gonna allow me to, to have more um, concave shapes. Do the same thing a couple more times here. Once you do this a few times, you get the hang of it and it becomes less tedious. Almost done. And you'll notice that, oh, there's this cell right here that's black, right? And is my ship going to be able to fly into that area? We'll cover that in one brief moment because there is no collider in this area. There's no collider here. But what are we, what's going to happen when we deal with this guy, right? So we'll show you how to do that. Almost done. So that should be it. Uh, let me line this up. Cool. So like this, we can see the individual areas that have these. Now that we're happy with this, um, minus this one, we'll talk about it in a moment. We'll, we'll hit apply. And let's close the sprite editor. Now, when we look at these tiles, we should be able to see in my tile map. Right now, we can still see the green area represents the colliders. If we've already pre-painted stuff and we changed the physics stuff, then we need to go to the tile map collider 2D and then we'll select reset. And you'll notice now um, after resetting, it's going to reread the original sprite and the physics maps that we just created. And you'll notice that the green areas now represent those physics areas that we um, drew up. So if we come back here and uh, we will notice that my ship cannot pass through that area, but it can pass through the different portion of my tile map that doesn't have the physics uh, colliders on it. And this can be really nice. Because now, if we come back here and look at my palette, 
I didn't originally draw some of these portions, but now that these areas have what I was originally talking about, I'm going to move my ship so that it's on the interior of this uh, structure and then sort of wall the ship into my into my structure now. Having done that, we can select and look at it again. And let's say that, uh, get out of this thing and look at the individual cell uh, tile map. And you can see that all the new portions still reflect those physics areas that we depicted. And let's say that we want to make this area look dark too, right? We can take this object and slap it on here. But wait, wait, wait. That looks weird, right? Because these guys now have the green outline. Crap, what can we do? Uh, if we hit play, then we can go in here and my ship is gonna be able to fly around this area where we know that it works. But as soon as I go into this area, you can see those green outlines that represent the colliders. I'm stuck. It's not really doing what I originally thought. How do we make that adjustment? So if we go back here, uh, one thing that I'm pretty sure does not work is doing the thing that we that originally worked for us in that if we select this thing go to sprite editor if we try to generate a physics shape onto this guy and then try to delete it it doesn't really work if we zoom in here and try to delete these nodes i'm hitting delete and then hit apply and then backing out of it do these guys have colliders let's check they still have colliders let's hit to um, tile map collider 2d does this fix it this i'm experimenting with this it does not fix it so that is not a, a good way to uh, apply it and, and this Gave me headaches for a while before I figured it out. Um, the physics mapping works well for portions of an image of individual cell, but if we want to delete a collider to a entire cell or part of our palette, the way to do this is like this. We will use the select tool, the arrow, and find that individual cell that we're dealing with. So if we go here and select this guy, hmm, I want to select this guy and uh, I don't want to see this in the inspector. So show me the individual cell. The, what I'm trying to find is the palette. Oops, not this thing. Close that. Close this too. In my palettes is the individual cells that are the tile assets. Remember when I said that tile maps are different than the sprite sheets? This you can see that this icon is like a noted box with a circle in it, and that represents a sprite, right? And if we go to our palettes folder, then these are tile assets, and these represent the actual assets that are used here that hold the information of the tile itself. It's not a sprite, it's a tile asset. And what we need to do is we need to find the, the cells that we want to make sure that they universally don't ever have a collider to them. And so in this case, it's actually this tile here. And the way I did last time was by selecting, yes, by just using, selecting the arrow and selecting that portion and looking in the inspector and in the inspector, it told me that this is tile asset 12, terrain asset 12. And so what's cool now is that I can select it by hitting this, just selecting that field. And it should highlight where it is inside our project window. Once I know where that is, I'll jump over here. And what I need to do here is the, the key to making this all work is go to collider type making sure that it's also terrain asset 12. I know that this works for sure. One more time, select that terrain asset 12, select it, find it in the project window and 
select that so that in the inspector shows terrain asset 12 and then go to collider type you want to make sure that we change the collider type from sprite to none once we've changed that to none we should be able to go to our tile map and notice that oh the green box that represents the collider for that particular tile map is now gone and what's cool now is that any future use of this particular tile if we were to paint this on I'll select it paintbrush and paint everywhere you'll notice that when I have this tile map selected it has no collider on it so that means my ship now is free to fly around and not bump into that bo bottom floor looking tile map while everything else is still operating with the way that we expect it. Cool. I hope this helped. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. Um, hope you guys have a great day. See ya.